Hi, this is Eitan Shalom at the Body Mind Wellness Center in San Diego. I'm here with my patient Graham to discuss the dry needling of trigger points. There are four causes or types of pain in the body. A skeletal pain, uh, for example, when you break a bone or when, um, God forbid, you have bone cancer. Vascular pain, such which is um, much less common, but such as you would feel if you were having a heart attack. Neurological pain, which is common. Um, migraines, carpal tunnel syndrome, neuralgia, sciatic pain. Those are all examples of neurological pain. In other words, pain involving um, some kind of uh, negative effect on the nerve. And then there's myofascial pain. Myo means muscle, fascia means, fascial means fascia, and I'll explain in a minute what fascia is, but muscles and fascia work together, and uh, fascia runs through the muscles. So examples of myofascial pain are uh, muscle sprain, muscle strain, uh, muscle tears, uh, tendon and ligament uh, sprains and strains, but most common is trigger point pain. The most common cause of myofascial pain is due to trigger points. Um, myofascial pain is the single most common cause of pain, and trigger point pain is the single most common cause uh, of uh, repetitive use pain and chronic pain that arises from tight muscles, um, that arises from tight muscles and joints associated with our sedentary lifestyle, um, exten extensive and long periods of time sitting at desks, working at computers, um, in which we uh, find ourselves in what's called forward translation, where our arms are forward and our heads and necks are forward, driving cars, reading books. All of this near vision activity conspires to create uh, trigger points in the muscles and fascia. Actually, our bodies um, were really designed for much uh, larger amounts of activity than we normally have in modern life. Uh, Stone Age paleo Paleolithic human beings were up and about walking and working and looking into the far distances much more uh, commonly than we do now. In fact, many of us can go a whole day without looking off into the distance. So we also suffer from eye strain, which can be associated with that. Um, and then stress is a big factor with the development of trigger points. What does stress do? Stress causes our muscles to tense up. Stress puts us into the fight or flight response and our muscles, especially with the fight aspect where we respond to stress with tension. What is tension? Tension is the shortening and tightening and contracting of muscles, in, in, in which is interesting to talk about how muscles work. Um, but I'll just say first that when we have tension, you know, think about what you do if you're really frustrated and you go, ah, all of your muscles, in order to do that, your muscles are actually shortening. I'll talk for a moment about how muscles work. How do muscles work? So Graham, for example, if you're doing strength training and you want to do a biceps curl, and here's your, your, um, your weight, um, the first thing that happens is you, your brain decides that what you want to do and your brain has to actually send that message to the muscle to tell it what to do. When nothing happens in our body uh, consciously, no conscious activity happens um, without the brain telling us what to do and conscious activity generally involves um, the motor uh, ner nervous system, the, 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 um, uh, the muscles. Um, things like digestion, we can't tell the body to digest, that's the autonomic nervous system. So um, the, we decide we want to do a biceps curl. The brain sends a message to the bicep muscle through the nerve, the motor nerve, what's called the motor nerve, which is different than, say, a sensory nerve. If you touch your skin, the reason why, even though my eyes are closed, I know that I, I can feel this is because of the sensory nerve. So there's sensory nerves all through the skin and all through the body. All pain and pleasure occurs because of sensory nerves. Um, okay, so we send a message to the muscle. There is a specialized uh, um, uh, uh, group of fibers in the muscle called the motor point, 
also known as the myoneural unit. The motor point is where the nerve actually attaches to the muscle because the nerve actually at some point attaches into the muscle like a tree it roots itself in the soil, except that uh, the, the, that's where the nerve uh, impulses, which are serotonin based, um, are transformed into muscular impulses, which are based on the sodium ion uh, uh, pump, which is based on um, uh, magnetic charges, positive and negative charges. In any event, that's a, a bit of science. So, and then once that impulse reaches the muscle, what does the muscle do? It actually shortens. The motor point tells the muscle to shorten, and it's only because the biceps is shortening that this bone comes this way. And so it's kind of, a, it's a lever. And so here's the joint. There's this bone, this joint, this bone. And this uh, bone of the upper arm, uh, it, the biceps muscle starts on that bone, and then it ends on this bone. And when it shortens, then this bone can come like that. At the same time, your triceps has now lengthened because every muscle has, is, it has an antagonist muscle that works in the opposite direction. So the bicep shortens, the triceps lengthens. Now I keep my arm like this and I want it to go back. My triceps now has to shorten and the biceps has to lengthen. Now, what happens if you do 300 biceps curls, even with a light weight? At the end of that time, you know, you don't have to do 300. If, you, if I do 20 biceps curls, uh, at the end of that time period, my biceps muscle is a little bit shortened. That's why it's so important to stretch after exercise and why stretching and other kinds of body work like massage, also things like Feldenkrais method or a Goski method, which work on activating the muscles and relaxing the joints can be so important for rehabilitation. But in any event, um, once, you, once you use the biceps over and over again, or any muscle over and over again, then that muscle's length and is left into a shortened peri uh, position. Now, so what happens if you're typing all day, and all day you're typing, all day you're typing, at the end of the day, these muscles that are involved with typing on the inside of the forearm and the outside of the forearm, they're going to be left in a shortened position. Now factor in, what if you are typing all day and you're under an enormous deadline? What if you're typing all day and you're very emotionally distraught because you're going through a divorce? What if you're typing all day and your boss is a bully or you don't like your boss? Maybe you're the bully. doesn't matter. But what if you're typing all day and you're very unhappy and, ver and or very tense? Especially if you're very tense, if there's anger and frustration and irritability involved, that all also conspires to shorten the muscles. Just one minute. And so what happens is when these muscles are constant, oh, and one more thing is sports injuries. You're walking, the, or not even necessarily sports, you're walking the dog, and it, you have a 60-pound a, a French bulldog, and suddenly the bulldog, well, you're not paying attention, to it, and the bulldog bolts, and you're holding the leash, and your arm is pulled really dramatically, that can also... Uh, cause muscular injury in terms of the trigger points that can activate the trigger points. So um, where I'm going with this is that um, when the muscles are left in a shortened position, either from overuse or from, let's say you go to pick up, a, 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 um, you, you try to suddenly decide uh, you suddenly got macho and you're going to do a biceps curl with a 60 pound weight and, and you, and you, you, uh, you could activate a trigger point with that, um, but the most common way, or by the bulldog pulling you, but the most common way that trigger points are activated is by repetitive use. And that's why people get what are called repetitive use or overuse injuries from um, sports, uh, like in your case, playing water polo, where you're doing the same motion over and over again. And also in your case, well, the same motion of the swimming, but then you're also hitting the ball. Um, so you suddenly hit the ball really hard when you were uh, um, uh, hadn't been hitting the ball, you know, you can activate a trigger point. And what happens is when trigger points get activated, um, then they can refer pain um, in different places of the body. I'm going to give you some examples of that in a minute. It, the trigger points can refer pain 
in a way that often people think, people will often come in and tell me that they're coming in because they have nerve pain, when actually they don't have nerve pain. What they have is trigger point pain. My theory is that because we learn as kids in, in health class that the muscles do work and the nerves are involved in, in sensation, people assume when they have a shooting pain down their arm or a pain down their leg, they assume that they have nerve pain. They've also been know people that have had carpal tunnel, which is nerve pain. They know people that have had sciatic pain, which is nerve pain. But lots of leg pain and back pain and 99% of shoulder pain uh, is actually muscular in origin, myofascial in origin. And the origin of that pain is our trigger points. I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little more about trigger points in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but now I want to talk about dry needling. 